And we didn't originally buy the property for hunting. That wasn't the intent. We cut trees down for a living, so we had to have a place to take all these trees, tree debris that we had. And we bought this property at a, at a decent price. And then we noticed there was deer on it. And there was an old pavilion on there that we, we modified quite a bit. And we, get, we put in, we're off grid electricity and, and put an outhouse in and stuff. So we have a decent place and we got places to cook and a, a place to sleep so we can come in and stay for a while. And a shower on top of that. We got to stay clean. <laughs> that was one of the first things, the shower. It's been working out really great so far, especially that I'm retired and I don't have to have it used for business purposes anymore. We lived in a subdivision and there was no houses there and it was all woods. So I'd spend a lot of time out in the woods. Then I got my first BB gun and that's when I start really getting into hunting. I lived with my grandparents a lot and they would have people come there hunting with, with bow and arrows. And, and that's, and that was well, probably about 10 years old when that started happening. And that's when I started really getting into it. And I'd make, I would make my own bows that were pretty primitive. <laughs> and then my dad finally bought me a, a really nice recurve and with some arrows. And that's when I really started getting into it. And when, and I, when I lived in Wisconsin, there wasn't much, either you worked or you on the farm or you're out fishing or hunting. So I really got into hunting then. I got my first deer when I was 12 with my bow. There wasn't much else to do <laughs> anyway. So I really got, enjoyed it. You're in your own little world then. Traditional archery is all you. It's, there's no sights, there's, it's all up to you and how much you practice and you, it feels when you get something like a, a deer or, or any other kind of animal that it's all you that did it, not not the bow. You don't, and you can't you can't blame the traditional bow if you have a bad shot. You only can blame yourself. Where where the compound is, well, something's wrong with my compound bow. Or the sights are off, or something's wrong. It's it's all you that. And it makes you more satisfied when you get something because you know that you're the one that did it, not not the bow. So that's that's the main reason I went to do traditional, back to my roots. <laughs> it's something, you know. If I make my own bow, that's even better. <laughs> when I have my stealth bow, I haven't got nothing with it yet, but I'm working on it. It was, it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. I mean, you could make a rough one, but to make a, a really nice, decent one, it takes, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. You need a lot more equipment than, you can do it by hand, but it takes forever. And when you get done with it and it works, it's great. <laughs> See, just, it, it's surprising what you can do by yourself if you put your mind to it. The one time I was out hunting, um, the, the Illinois River was flooded, so we were getting a lot of bucks coming up here. And I, they were following a doe scent where a bunch of does had run. There was one buck after another, but I was too far away. So I decided to move my stand. I went to a different tree that was closer to the trail. And I was putting up my stand. I had my bow hung on a tree below me while I was putting the stand up. And then I got, just got the stand hooked in and I looked down the trail and here comes a big buck and I, I didn't have my bow, I didn't have my arrows or anything. So I, I was hanging upside down to grab my bow and my arrows. And I, I finally got him, got up there and the deer came right underneath me and I tried to shoot instead of hitting the deer, I hit my leg with, with my bow and knocked my arrow off. So it, Deer went on onto my other side and it stopped behind a tree and it couldn't see me. And all it was showing was its vitals. And I took another arrow out quick and, and shot it right through the, through the heart. And that was one of the biggest deer I ever got out here. It, it's hard to explain if you never 
experienced anything like that, uh, what, it, what it feels like. It's a lot of adrenaline and, and it's, you know, you got, you know, you're not just there to kill something, you're there to get, get the meat too. So most people don't understand that part of it, I don't think. It was a fallen tree, so I, I walked up the fallen tree and it was leaning against the tree it had fallen against. And I was up maybe 15 feet. Here comes a deer, it wasn't a big one. It gets about 10 yards in front of me. So I took the, take the shot, I missed the, I missed the deer at 10 yards. So the deer takes off, but it didn't see me, it didn't know what was going on. And it takes off, goes over under an oak tree that was eating acorns. So it was, and it, I had a 40 pound recurve and the, the deer gave me a perfect broadside. And I just aimed and hoped, I wasn't sure how far it was. And I, I aimed as best I could, let the arrow go, and uh, I'm, I'm watching, and it was far enough away, I couldn't see if the arrow ended or not, and the deer was standing, and all of a sudden it just fell over. So it went right through the deer, and the deer didn't really even know what happened. So my brother John comes over there, and he says, well, I showed him where I was standing, well, where's the deer? He's gonna help me drag it out. I said, well, it's way over there under that tree, and he marked it off paced it off, it was 63 yards. He couldn't believe that. <laughs> he said, you gotta be kidding, you, 63 yards? That was, that was one of the longest shots I ever took with a, with a, with a traditional bow. And it got right, right through the heart. It was, but it was luck, <laughs> but it was, it was fun. You should try all things, not, not just hunting. I mean, you should try everything. It's, if you just stay on the computers and stuff like that, you'll never enjoy what's real. Computers, computer games and stuff aren't real. You, when, you, when you go out hunting, that's, that's something that's real. It's, it's interesting because it brings you closer together. You have stories to tell each other. You, you come in from your hunt and you tell them, well, I seen this deer, or I got a shot, and you explain it in detail what you've done, and it's an experience that a lot of other things do. I mean, it's something you both all share together. A good way to see life, I think. You know, it's, and I don't know how else to explain it. It's just a, a camaraderie that you have with other people that you can't, it's hard to get any other way. You're on the hunt, so you help them drag it out, you help them butcher it, you help them, you know, it's, it's all together. That's, that's the, what, what hunting's about. It's not just going out and kill something. That's, that's the, what people think that's what the hunters do, that they're ignorant fools that go out and want to kill something. It's, it's way more than that. It's better that than having paid an assassin to do all your dirty work, like kill it and butcher it and stuff and go to the store and buy it. It's you yourself that's doing it. You, you're closer to nature that way, I think, than, than you are thinking that everything is made at the store. They, I don't know if they think it's made in the basement. I don't know what, where they think food comes from. It, it shows you what reality is, not, not some fake stuff that's out there now. In the morning, it's hard to get out of bed. <laughs> But no, it's, you look forward to it. You know, you don't, you, you know, it could turn out to be a really exciting day. And sometimes, most of the time it's not. It's, you sit in the stand for hours and you don't, you, you get to watch the birds and, the, and all the other critters run around. And if you're lucky, a deer will come by. You, you're not, you got a lot of time to contemplate on other things too. You know, why am I here? What am I doing here? stuff like that, the deep stuff. Enjoy it, it's, it's self-discipline. You make, you go out there and you'll sit for three or four hours and you gotta sit still. You can't jump around or move or anything. You don't go out there and run around like they show you on television. You, it's more stealthy. You, you gotta be really stealthy and, and patient. And it teaches you all that too. You know, there's more, a lot more to it than people know unless they do it. We, we usually get up at four in the morning and have coffee and 
an oatmeal or some cereal or something just to get you going in the morning. It's kind of cold, you hurry up and get dressed and get all your gear on and head out there. You can't run out there because you get overheated and then when you get in the stand, you're so hot, then when you cool off, you're freezing. So you want to take your time walking out to the stand. So that's when the electric bike comes in handy. <laughs> if you like the outdoors, hunting's one of the, the best things you could get into. It shows you how life really is. There's no other sport that is like that. If you never tried it, you'll never experience it either. So you gotta try it.